unidentified flying objects. Are they proof that we are being visited by civilizations from other stars? Or just what are they? Do you know what time it is? No. Are you all right? Where have you been? Uh, What's the matter? I'll be all right. I was just out riding on the bluff. Darling, at least leave a note. I was worried about you. Roger, I saw them again. Those lights. There were four of them, and I saw Let's them... Let's talk about it at dinner. Don't you want to know what happened? Not right now. I know what you're thinking, but I can prove it this time. Lisa, we've been through this before. Look, I took movies. It's here on film. I know it is. Lisa, listen to me. They never existed. Just forget about them, please. But I can prove that they do exist. I know I can. Dr. Simmons has been telling you for more than a year. They're only in your mind. 
Aren't you feeling well, Mom? She's fine, Amy. Don't worry. Yeah. I'm going to start the salad. Herring, below. 10 o'clock. Exeter, New Hampshire. Roger. I see it, sir. And look at those farms. Reminds me of one of my Grandma Sue's patchwork quilts. Coming up ahead, Harry. Rockbound coast of Maine. Got it, sir. Rugged but beautiful. Bangor International Airport, dead ahead. Okay, Harry, grab the rails. Speedboard's coming out. We've been cleared number one to pancake at Bangor. You know, when I was at MIT, I was always trying to get ahead of my classwork so I could spend a long weekend up here. Did you make it? Once. It's October. Leaves turn, air crisp. Met a girl at Cambridge who was a senior at Bennington. Vermont, right? Right. We both planned to cut classes Monday and Friday and meet halfway. See this terrific little inn, the Ligon Arms on the Massachusetts New Hampshire border. Um, cozy little place, you know. Took a lot of planning, I bet. Planned like a mission, Harry. Driving time, supplies, the right albums. Figured everything. Except New England weather. Record snow. Blizzard. You didn't give up, did you? She never got out of Bennington. I spent the whole four days in a little motel outside of Worcester, next to an iron foundry. Tough break, sir. Hope the guys at the iron foundry appreciated the music you brought along. Got a warm heart, Sergeant. Is this a foreman residence? Yes, I'm Amy Foreman. Hello, Amy. I'm Captain Ryan. This is Sergeant Fitz. Hello, Amy. How do you do? Uh, may I ask what this is about? We're from Project Blue Book, U.S. Air Force. Your mother wrote us a letter that she'd filmed some UFOs. Oh, the movies! Would you like to come in? Thank you. Would you like to wait in the living room? Okay. Mom, Captain Ryan and Sergeant Fitz are here. Feel just like I walked into a history book. I reckon these are genuine antiques, don't you? That's for sure, Harry. Hello. I'm Lisa Foreman. How do you do, Mrs. Foreman? I'm Captain Ryan. This is Sergeant Fitz. Well, Hello. Nice to meet you both. I'm going to be late for school. OK, honey. Have a nice day. I will. Nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you, too, Amy. Bye. Bye, Amy. Well, I'm glad you came. You know, I was worried that that letter I sent you wouldn't be taken seriously. Not at all. Your descriptions were perceptive and intriguing. And when you wrote that you had the incident on film, why, naturally, we wanted to check it out. Movies of UFOs are rare, ma'am. Well, I'm sure that you're anxious to see the film. Sergeant, would you mind pulling down the blinds? And if you don't mind, Captain, putting the screen in front of the fireplace. All right. Thank you. We're admiring your furnishings, Miss Foreman. Oh, thank you. The really good pieces are 18th century. The house itself was built over 200 years ago. The original house. Of course, it's been remodeled many times since, but it stayed in the family all that time. Some of the past residents? <laughs> my ancestors, the Trescotts. This over here is my great-great-great-grandfather, Samuel Trescott. He was an officer in the Massachusetts militia during the Revolutionary War. Served right here in this township. 
Well, shall we sit down? You say he was a member of the Massachusetts militia, ma'am? Yes, that's right. Not many people realize that Maine was a part of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts until 1820. Then we became an independent state. Is it okay to begin? Sure. She's a natural, Mrs. Foreman. What do you think? It's very unusual, Mrs. Foreman. Did you use regular indoor-outdoor film, ma'am? Whatever you can get at the camera store. Captain, that film has an ASA of 160. Judging from the intensity of those lights, we're talking about 6,000 lumens or more. How bright were they to the naked eye? Almost blinding, Captain. At the end of the film, it looks like you dropped the camera while shooting. I did. I don't know why, but I fainted. Did you feel sick in any way? Headache? Nausea? No, just a little dizziness afterwards. I really didn't think it was anything serious. Mrs. Foreman, with your permission, we'd like to have this film examined by photographic experts at Wright-Patterson. Will I get it back? Good as new. We'd like to have the camera also. Oh, of course. Here it is. Thank you. Sergeant, will you label these, please? Yes, sir. Captain, may I ask you a question, please? Of course. Will you want to talk to my husband about your investigation here? I suppose we might like to do that, yeah. I haven't told Roger that I contacted you. About a year and a half ago, my father died, and it hit me pretty hard. It was about the same time that I saw the two previous sightings that I wrote you about. Both my doctor and my husband insisted that I had hallucinated them. And your husband didn't believe you this time either, ma'am. That's why I asked you to come here this morning after he left for work. Where did all this take place, ma'am? Oh, out at Mansfield's Bluff. It's not very far from here. Could you take us there now? Certainly. It was dusk, about 7 o'clock last Thursday. I was standing here in Princess. My horse was behind me when they approached from the west, over there. How large would you say they were? Well, it's hard to say. They moved so quickly and were so bright. I can only estimate that they were each one about one, maybe two feet across. Was your horse frightened at any time? Princess seemed to know that they were coming before I did. She became very restless and excited, as if she was afraid. But she stayed with me. If I understand correctly, the one object came out of the west, making a path this way, and then split into four, right about here, right? and then circled around you, glowing intensely. Is that correct? Yes. They were blue and white, just like in the film. I remember those colors distinctly. Uh, where were you when you fainted, Mrs. Foreman? Were you... Yes, right here. They were circling around me like so. The next thing I recall, Princess was nibbling my ear, and the lights were gone. In your letter, you mentioned two other sightings on this same cliff. April 16th and May 17th of last year. Were they similar encounters? Yes, I saw the same four blue and white lights. 
Each previous sighting occurred also at dusk. And each time I was waiting for them. What do you mean, waiting? Captain, I know that it may be hard for you to believe anything that I say at this point. But I'm telling you that I have always known that those UFOs were coming. I've had premonitions. Always. Hello, I'm Roger Foreman, Lisa Foreman's husband. Oh, how do you do, sir? Won't you come in? I'm Captain Ryan. Yes, I know who you are, and uh, Sergeant Fitz. Mr. Foreman? It wasn't easy for me to come here. I just wanted to ask how long you intended to stay in Northcliffe. Well, it depends on when we complete our investigation, sir. I was hoping I might convince you to complete it as soon as possible. Mr. Foreman, if you're, uh, if you're asking us to end our investigation, I'm afraid it's no longer in our hands. You don't seem to understand. You're a witness. My wife was under psychiatric care. We're already aware of that, sir. She told you herself? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, why not? Practically everyone in this area seems to know. Doesn't her past mental health uh, affect her credibility? We're not really here to judge anyone, sir. We just came to see your wife's film. You know something funny? She didn't even show it to me. Would it really have mattered? Why? Because I wouldn't have believed her anyway. You tell me, sir. You're right. I honestly feel she rigged this whole charade so someone would believe her. Excuse me, sir. Sergeant, I'm an attorney. Do you know what it's like coming home from a rough day in court? And having my daughter tell me that the kids at school were teasing her. Saying wonderful things like, uh, how's your crazy mommy, Amy? She's still weaving baskets. Amy and I have had to live with that. Truly sorry, sir. I thought we'd put it all behind us a year and a half ago, that Lisa was getting better. Then, last week, she came home talking about those lights again. Nobody sees them except her, I swear it. And I'm telling you, I don't want us to go through that again. Look at me, I don't even know you. Here I am, spilling my insides out. Now and again, sir, we all need to talk to someone. Sometimes a stranger's best. Yeah, I guess you're right. Thanks for listening. Captain, I have radar reports in from the Canadian border all the way down to Boston. Nothing has shown up anywhere near North Cliff. Coast Guard? We came up zero there, too. If there was a UFO in the area, only your witness saw it. Or we missed it on the deck. Colonel Hutton. Yeah, hang on. Right, Pat. No, oh, thanks. Captain Ryan. Uh, ben, this is Jerry Gibbons. We've got a prelim analysis on Mrs. Foreman's 8mm movie. Shoot. Looks legit. Every frame checked out okay. We're still analyzing it, but as of now, the film wasn't tampered with and the camera wasn't faulty. Uh, no light leaks, no lens flares. But don't ask me what those four blue and white lights are. You can pass that buck on to us, Jerry. Uh, we'll get the film back to you as soon as we can. Thanks. What'd they say, sir? The lab thinks the lights are real. You're sure? Yes, ma'am. Wright Patterson seems convinced that your films are valid. I can't tell you how this makes me feel. Ma'am? All those doctors were so positive that I hadn't seen anything, that I'd made it up. But now you've proved that Dr. Simmons and all of them were wrong. Even if we don't know exactly what it was you saw. Captain, would you do me a favor, please? Of course, if I can. I'd like you to talk to my psychiatrist. Tell him about all this. Oh, I don't know if we could, really. You're telling me that I really did see something. 
I'd like him to hear it from you, personally. Officially. Please. Well. His name's Dr. Alfred Simmons. I'll give you his address. And telephone number. Okay, we'll talk to him. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for your time, man. So you came all the way over here to tell me your experts believe Lisa actually saw a UFO. That's right, Dr. Simmons. And that she was not suffering from any type of hallucination. That's correct. Let me tell you something about Lisa, Captain. She's a very bright young lady. Has a liberal arts degree from Smith. Good family. Good husband. You want to know what caused her breakdown? Well, if you think it's important, Doctor. Yes. Her mother died when she was 14. A very vulnerable age. A time when a girl needs a mother the most. Fortunately, Mr. Truscott, her father, was an excellent parent. Always there when she needed him. Unfortunately, a bond like that isn't easily broken. And when he suddenly died, she... she just couldn't accept it. But that doesn't make her psychotic, does it, Doctor? Depends on how you look at it. When did she say she saw these UFOs? Eight days ago, and last year twice. On April 16th and May 17th, sir. She did tell you that April 16th was the day her father died and May 17th was the evening she was committed to the hospital. No, sir, she didn't. A small oversight, I presume. Then she has described these several encounters to you. I've known all about them. Four blue and white lights, correct? That's right. And they hovered close to the ground, and they spun around her, glowing and pulsating and, and trying to communicate with her. Yeah. But you don't think her sightings are valid, Doctor? Captain, the woman was mentally and physically ill. Her blood pressure was sky high. She had acute insomnia. Look, I know Lisa Foreman, and much as I hate to admit it, a smart girl like that could have faked that film. I think our lab at Wright-Patterson would have picked that up if she had. I'm sure your lab is one of the best, but I've done a little photography of my own. Are you trying to tell me that any photographic effects can't be faked? Our technician says there was no lens flare, no light leaks. The film was untouched, no double exposures. How do you even know she took the movie? I guess we don't. You don't? Are there any radar reports confirming possible UFOs? No, sir. Any other witnesses? No. Seems to me, Captain, all you really have is Lisa's word. No, that's wrong, Doctor. We have a motion picture showing four unidentified objects. Unexplainable, unknown. And until they are identified, they'll remain that way. You have my professional opinion. That's all I can give you. We appreciate it very much, Sergeant. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, Captain, Sergeant. I really wish there was something else on that bluff. For Lisa's sake. And Roger's. And Amy's. But you'll never find anything, Captain.
Bell is in. Well, I'm sorry. Captain Ryan and Sergeant Fitz both are out for the evening. We're taking Miss Emily Butler from the library to supper. Care to leave a message? Uh, no, thank you. I'll call back later. any cases for members of the same family, so you oppose on different nights? I don't think I've had any cases. Why don't you tell Sergeant Fitz and I everything that happened? Do you want to start recording? That is the procedure we like to follow, Amy. Well, I stayed up a little past my regular bedtime, 9.30, to check my mom. But she was sleeping, so I went into my room to get ready for bed. So I was taking off the bedspread, out of the corner of my eye, I thought I saw, well, a UFO. I would have waked my mom up. It was the first time in a long time she was having a good sleep. And then I tried to call you, you know. But I didn't want to miss them if there were going to be any more. And there were more. Three more. It was fabulous. Could you describe them, please, Amy? Everything. Well, they were all the same, but they came one at a time. They were bigger than the biggest plane I ever saw. They didn't have wings. It was oval. A streamlined kind of body, you know. It was shining like the brightest light I ever saw. And besides white, there was a kind of a golden color. It had lots of windows like passenger windows in a plane. How far away would you guess? Oh, way out to sea. They finally flew out of sight, over the horizon. In what direction, Amy? Well, it started to the left, that's north, and went south. How fast? Golly, I'm not sure. But it took like one, two, three, four, five seconds to go all the way across the sky. Could you draw some pictures, Amy? Oh, sure. I'll go get some crayons to do the color. Is it all finished? No, they want me to make some drawings. Captain, would you still like me to wait? No, the personal interview's over, ma'am. Having someone else to corroborate the story is very important, isn't it? Even if she is my own daughter. Amy's sightings differ quite a bit from yours, ma'am. Oh, how? One principal difference, Mrs. Foreman. You said you always have a premonition before you see the lights. They seem to call you to the cliffs, I think you said. Last night, obviously, you had no feeling at all. 
No, that's right. I was sleeping very soundly the first time in months. You don't think there's a connection then? Mrs. Foreman, we've just begun. You understand, Captain? That's for your eyes only. On a strict need-to-know basis. Am I clear on that? Yes, General. Now, we've covered the area, and I don't know of any other witnesses. I can handle the problem of Amy Foreman, but if someone else should shout cover up... National security requires that remaining under cover for now, Captain. Blue Book has taken pot shots before. Yes, General. Plenty of times. Buy a new flak suit. Was that any help, sir? Yes and no. Come again? They verified something. Yeah, what? They're keeping a lid on it, Harry. We can't tell anybody that classified? I can't tell anybody that classified. Mrs. Foreman, we went to the town hall to see what we could find out about the bluffs, uh, if there could be any natural causes for the lights. Natural causes? High-powered lines or underground cables or marsh gases. People interpret UFOs from amazingly simple things. On weather balloons. Mine was going way too fast for a balloon. I know it was. What did you find at town hall? We didn't find what we'd hoped we'd find, but... Uh... We did find a delightful lady named Emily Butler. You met Emily? She told us about the militiamen on the bluffs that disappeared in 1777. The story is that my great-great-great-great-grandfather, Samuel Trescott, and three of his friends deserted and didn't fight. That he ran away without even his musket or sword. Somebody found grandfather's sword out in the bluffs several years ago. You see? We think they probably saw a British landing party in the bay. Fought bravely defending the Commonwealth. Nobody can prove that because they did just disappear and were never heard of again. Miss Butler made a point of the blue and white uniforms of the militiamen. <laughs> you ever thought of the coincidence of the blue and white lights? No, I haven't. That is interesting. But Amy's UFOs were golden and red. I mean, she said that... And some were white, Mom. A real glary color. Captain... Amy's sightings and mine, they are connected, aren't they? I mean, you can at least tell us that much. Mrs. Foreman, I can't tell you any more than I have. As soon as I can, you'll be the first to know. Captain Ryan, if we were being invaded by UFOs, you'd let us know sometime, wouldn't you? I'm sure somebody with a lot more rank would let everybody know, Eve. Good. Because nobody believed me at school. And I wouldn't fib about a thing like that. Amy, I know you wouldn't fit. We're issuing a statement to the press at 1200 Eastern. Sir, under the circumstances, I'd like permission to inform the witness personally. I feel an obligation. Uh, we have an appointment at 1100. Thank you, sir. Now, sir, can you fill me in? They want the lid on till 11, Harry. Amy gets to lift it. You decided to join us for the picnic. Hi, Mrs. Foreman. Hi, Amy. Hi, Captain Ryan. Hi, Sergeant Fitz. Hi, Please sit down. Oh, can you join us? We brought enough. It's like a perfect Saturday for a picnic. We've got a plane waiting at Bangor. All gassed up. Be leaving in about 90 minutes. Actually, we just stopped by to say goodbye and uh, return your film and your camera with our thanks. Captain, what will your report say? Something was on that film. You saw something. For now, what those images are is simply not known. Well, I thought your technicians could unravel anything. Miss Foreman, think of it this way. There's lots of phenomena nobody can explain. Not just UFOs, all around us. Nobody really knows what electricity is. Nobody completely understands magnetic fields. 
Now, your eye has been sensitive to certain impulses that maybe nobody else in the world can see. This film emulsion has responded to something that might not be visible to anyone else. It might not be picked up by any other means. You're unique. You're very special. But you're still not able to tell me what I saw, huh? Amy, a two-star general gave me permission to reveal some classified information to you in just a few seconds. You're not just saying that? You're going to read about it in all the New England papers. You're going to hear about it on television and on radio. But you are going to be the first civilian to hear about it. No kidding. What? Last Tuesday night, about 21.30 hours. 9.30 p.m., yes. There was a submarine 30 miles offshore here, and it was not one of ours. Two RF-101s were scrambled to pinpoint the location of the unknown submarine. Those aircraft then rendezvoused with an RC-121. That aircraft dropped several parachute-retarded magnesium flares, one of the most powerful lights in the world. 10 million candle power each. And through the atmosphere from your distant location, those flares would give the appearance of strange looking objects. Amy, your drawings look an awful lot like pictures that have been taken during such night maneuvers. We had to keep the operation classified until it was successfully completed, until positive identification and intention of that submarine was known. Very interesting, sir. I thought you'd like to have these. Trade for the, your drawings that we're going to keep, OK? You're really going to keep mine? Even if there was what you'd call a logical explanation? Hey, you're going to be in the blue book file, Amy. You are too, Mrs. Foreman. But in a different category. Nothing logical at all. If there were answers to everything, we'd have a lot less to do. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Captain. Thank you. You've been very kind. Goodbye. Goodbye, Amy. Please say goodbye to Mr. Foreman for us. Yes, of course I will. Thank you. Bye. I sure wish I had seen yours. So do I, Pumpkin. So do I. You haven't heard the news. No, what? Well, it's going to be in the Sunday papers, and I just heard it on the evening news now. But uh, Captain Ryan and Sergeant Fitz came over to personally tell Amy. Yeah? It seems that what she saw were secret military maneuvers. Uh, magnesium photo flares. I gather that they were tracking Soviet submarines. No kidding. Just that, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I it had to be something simple. They also said that my file would be listed as an unknown. There is something on that film. I mean, with Amy away and... Uh, I mean, I'll be out for the evening, too. Are you sure you'll be all right? Of course I'm going to be all right. Will you look at me? I mean, I am fine and dandy, and I'm looking forward to having an evening where I don't have to do any cooking. Now, do you honestly feel that I am incapable of taking care of myself for a few hours? Sure you are. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you don't believe my experiences. But you have to trust me when I tell you that I'm all right, that I can take care of myself. I want to be well. And I am well. Please believe that. I don't want to believe it, darling. It's just that you've had such a rough time. Okay. You go to that meeting and make a brilliant speech, and I don't want you thinking about me for one minute. 
All right? Okay, darling. I'll see you later. Do good.